as all stained glass of Sintra is an abstract game where you are trying to get the most points. Now, the kind of theme that's going on here is that you are a glass artisan and you're all working on the same palace, Sintra, but you want to be the one to make the best windows in the entire palace and that's represented by your score. Now, to set up the game, you're going to start by putting out these factory tiles and you're going to want two times the number of players plus one. So for a two player game, we've got five here, seven for a free and nine for a four player game. Once you've done this, each player will then want to pick a colour. So they'll take the palace board and also the glass panes, a glazier and two tokens. You'll put the scoreboard on the table, you put one of each player's tokens in the broken glass track and one in the score track and each player will place their glazier in the leftmost position under their palace. They'll then lay out their glass planes randomly. So we shuffle them all up and then we put them out just one above each space. Each player does have a pane that has wild spaces on it. So the blues here, for example, these are the wild spaces. They need to be face down. So they simply just flip that tile over and they're ready to go. The next thing you need to do is set up what's going to score each round. So you take one of each of the five different colors of tiles, shake them up in your hand and you drop them out randomly, placing from the bottom of the track up. Once you've filled the track, You'll then take all the other tiles, which will be shoved into the lovely bag here, shake those up, draw one more tile out, and that will be your top spot tile. Then you need to populate your factories. And do this by just drawing four at a time out of the bag. And you place four on each of the factories you have in play. You then need to pick a first player and the rules say that your first player should be the last person who cleaned a window. Now obviously you don't have to do it that way. They'll start with this marker and that's just to let you know they're starting the game and then it will go into the centre. The final thing you need to do is you need to have the glass stack available near the table. This is to put broken glass into. Right, that's the game all set up and we're ready to play. But what are we trying to do? Well, I did say we're trying to get the most points, but how are you getting those points? That's where your palaces come in. Now, you'll be taking tiles and placing them, matching the colour as you have on your panes of glass. When you fill a tile, you'll score it and flip it over. If you've already flipped it once, then you will remove it. The palaces actually have a side B and a side A. And this affects how the end game scoring works. I would advise for the first game that you use A. It's important that all the players are using the same side, but otherwise you can use either. Now, the way that these are gonna score is they score points equal to what's shown under them and any that have already scored to the right of them. And you'll be marking these with tiles that you use as you complete them. So you can tell if I had that, that would just be four points. But if I also had done that first, I would get seven points. If I did that and then that, I would get the four points there and then just three points when I place this. So you can see it makes sense sometimes to fill up from that side, sometimes to fill up from the left. In the A side, you want to be having groups around these little diamonds here. And it, the more tiles you end up with completed and around those, the more bonus points you're gonna get at the end of the game. Speaking of bonus points, as well as the points at the bottom of the track, each of the rounds has a bonus colour. And this is also going to be how you track and time the game. As you finish a round, you'll get rid of the tile off of that track and it will just go in your broken glass. During the round, 
every time you complete a pane that has the colour on that you're currently getting a bonus for, you get an additional point for each one tile of that colour. So if blue here completed this one, they would get a bonus two points in this first round. So what are you actually doing on your turn? Well, you have two options. If you're not at the leftmost space of your board, you can move your glazier back to the leftmost space. If, however, you're at the leftmost space, you have to take tiles. Now, the way taking tiles works, and this is what the majority of the game is going to be, is that you will look at the factories and you'll pick one colour from one of the factories that you want to take. So let's say we're doing blue here, they'd kind of like yellow. So they're going to go to this factory here, take the two yellow, the other colours go into the middle. They then place the yellow on their pane of glass here. Now in that instance, that was fine, they didn't have to break any glass. But if, say, they had gone for blue, they could move their glazier over to underneath this pane, which would allow them to place blue on the pane over here. Now, the issue here is, ah, oh, they can only place one. And so they would have to break the additional glass. Whenever you break glass, you move down on the broken glass track and you can see this is going to incur negative points at the end of the game. If you get to the bottom of the track you'll immediately reduce your current score and then go back to the top of the track. Another way that you'll end up breaking glass is you've noticed that glass ends up going into the middle here and that's because once there is glass in the middle here you can take a colour from the middle. The first person to do this will get the first player tile. So let's say Red did this now, he's going to place them here, so he moves over to this space. Now that he's here, he can only place glass on the spaces to the right of here. So this is kind of where the moving left is going to be a useful action, because if you want to place tiles to the left of where your glazier is, you can't. You have to move, take a turn to move him first. But you can also use that turn to delay actions if you don't want to be taking tiles just yet. Having taken this first player tile, he'll keep that in front of him, but he counts as having broken glass. So he'll move down the track in the same way as if he took more glass than he could place. Now, anyone else can take from the centre there without any penalty. They don't have to wait for the factories to empty, and they could still choose to take from those factories. The round will end once all tiles are taken. You cannot do nothing on your turn. You either have to take tiles or have to move your glazier. So it is possible. Say we went like this. Um, we ended up with ah, four red in the middle here. That could be a problem. If you couldn't place four red on any of your places, so say he was here, Urgh, he's lucky, he can go back here. But if he's here, he has to jump all the way to the end here to be able to place the red, if that was all that was left in the middle. Once you've run out of tiles, that's then the end of the round. And you'll simply set up again. So at the end of the round, you'll remove the round bonus to keep track of your rounds. You'll shake up the remaining tiles. And you'll put four on each factory again. The first player will place the first player token in the middle and start their turn. Now, you will eventually run out of tiles in this bag because you're putting them all out on your boards and whenever they're going away from your boards you put one to represent your scoring and the rest go in the broken glass tower. And so eventually this is going to be empty and this is going to have loads in. So all you do is at that point when you can't draw anything more out of the bag tip it in and refill the bag. Now, the game is going to end at the end of the sixth round. So you will have been going along, doing this, and moving your score along as you're scoring on the track. 
and then you'll do the final scoring. And the final scoring will start by scoring one point for every three pieces of glass left on your glass panes. So for the blue player here, it'd be a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So they'd get two points and you simply move them two points on the score track. You then take off any broken glass. So in this case, blue hasn't lost any, red had lost one. More than likely you'd have or worse minuses than that going on. Having done that, you're then going to score your bonuses for the palace. And there is on the score track here a little summary for both A and B. Now for A, you're going to look at each of your diamonds and count how many pieces of glass you've got next to them. If you've got one or none, you'll get no points. Two will get you three points. Three would get you six points. And if you manage to fill all four spaces around a diamond, that'd get you 10 points. So having scored this first one, you then score the next one, which for all of these would be zero. If you're doing B, then scoring is a little more complicated. You look at how many panes you've completed so that you have tiles on both the spaces, and then you multiply this by the number of tiles you have on your bottom bit of board of a color of your choice. So in this case, the sensible choice would be to go yellow, and then two, which would get six points. And that's how you play Azul Stained Glass of Sintra. Whoever has the highest score is the winner. Now, one other thing to be aware of is the factories do have another side that you can use. And this is for if you're having trouble telling the different colors apart, they have different sections so you can place specific colors in those specific spaces. And that's it. Thanks for watching.